Hi, I'm Peter Burris, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation from our wonderful Palo Alto studios. Great conversation today with Jeremy Werner, who's the Vice President of SSD Marketing at Toshiba Memory. Jeremy, welcome to the CUBE. Thank you, Peter, great to be here. Uh, you know, Jeremy, one of the reasons why I find you being here so intriguing and interesting is there's a lot going on in the industry. We talk about new types of workloads, AI, cloud, you know, deep learning, all of these other things. All of these technologies are, or all these applications and workloads are absolutely dependent on the idea that the infrastructure has to start focusing less on just persisting memory and focusing more on delivering many to these memory or delivering uh, data to these very advanced applications. That's where Flash comes in. Tell us a little That's bit right. about the role that Flash has had in the industry. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. Uh, thank you for recognizing that. So, Flash has a long history. 30 years ago, actually, Toshiba invented Flash memory, and it's had a transformation on people's lives everywhere on all kinds of products, starting with the very first application for Flash being, for NAND Flash being kind of removable memory cards. Uh, you had the digital camera revolution. Then it found its way into cell phones. That enabled smartphones and people carrying around all their media, et cetera. And now we're in kind of this large third phase adoption, which is, like you mentioned, the transition from persistent kind of storage with the hard drive where your data was available, but not really available to do a lot with, uh, to now storage on an SSD, which allows artificial intelligence, business analytics, and all of the new workloads that are changing business paradigms. So clearly, flash adoption is increasing in the data center. Now, Wikibon's been talking about this for quite some time. My colleague, David Floyer, was one of the first people out there to project uh, the role that Flash was going to play within the data center. Uh, how are you seeing, as you talk to customers, as you talk to some of the big systems manufacturers and some of the hyperscalers, how are you hearing or what are they saying about how they are applying and will intend to apply Flash uh, in the market today? Yeah, it's amazing. When we talk to customers, they really can't get enough flash. Uh, as an industry, we just came out of a major shortage of flash memory. And now, uh, a lot of new technologies have, are coming online. So we at Toshiba just announced our 96 layer 3D flash, our QLC flash. This is all in an attempt to get more uh, flash storage into the hands of these customers so that they can bring these new applications to market. And you know this transformation, it's happening quickly, although maybe uh, not as quickly as people think because there's a very long road ahead of us. Uh, still, you look out 10 years into the future, you're talking about 40 or 50% growth per year, at least for the next decade. So I want to get to that in a second, but I want to touch upon something that you said that uh, many of the naysayers about Flash uh, predicted that there would be shortfalls, and they were very chicken little-like. <laughs> you know, when, oh my gosh, the sky is going to fall, the prices are going to go out of control. We did have a shortage, and it we was did. a pretty significant one, yeah. but it, we were able to moderate some of the price increases, so it didn't lead to a whole bunch of design losses or a disruption in how we thought about new workloads, did it? True, no it didn't, and you know, I think that's the value of flash memory. Uh, basically what we saw was, the traditional significant decline in pricing uh, took a pause. And you look back, you know, 20 years ago, I mean, flash was a thousand times more expensive. And as we move down that cost curve, it enables more and more applications to adopt it. Even at today's pricing, flash is an amazingly valuable tool to data centers and enterprises, they roll out new workloads, and particularly around analytics and artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, kind of all the uh, interesting new technologies that you hear about. Yeah, and, and I think that's probably going to be the way that these kinds of blips in supply are going to be. It'll, be, it'll perhaps lead to a, a, a temporary uh, moderation in how fast, the, right. how fast the prices drop. Right. It's not going to lead to you know, massive disruption no, and, no. and craziness. And, and I will also say this, you mentioned 20 years ago stuff was really expensive. I mean, I cut my teeth on mainframe stuff, <laughs> and I remember when disk drives on the mainframe were $3,500 a megabyte. So 
It could be a lot worse. It could be. Uh, so <laughs> let's now, uh, flash is a great technology, SSD is a great technology, but it's made value by, valuable by an overall ecosystem. That's right. Uh, there's a lot of other supporting technologies that are really crucial here. Uh, disk has been dominated by interfaces like SATA for a long time. Uh, been done, done very well by us, allowed for uh, a fair amount of parallelism, a lot of pathing to mainly disk. Uh, but that's starting to change as we start thinking about flash coming on and being able to provide much, much faster access times. What's going on with SATA and what's on the horizon? Yeah, so great question. Uh, really, what we saw with SATA in about 2010 was the introduction of a six gigabit SATA interface. And that was a doubling of the prior speed that was available. And then zero progress since then. And actually the SATA roadmap has nothing forward. So people have been stuck effectively with that SATA interface for the last eight years. Now they've had some choices. You look at the existing ecosystem, the existing infrastructure, SATA and SAS drives were both choices. And SAS is a faster interface today, up to 12 gigabit. Uh, it's full duplex, whereas SATA is half duplex. So you can read and write in parallel. So actually you can get four times the speed uh, on a SAS drive that you would get on a SATA drive today. The challenge with SATA, with SAS, why everyone went to SATA, uh, well, I won't say everyone went to SATA, but uh, maybe three or four times the adoption rate of SATA versus SAS was the SAS products that were available in the market really didn't uh, deliver the most economical uh, deployment They were of more flash. expensive. They were more expensive. All right, but that's changing. That is changing. So what we've been trying to do is prepare and work with our customers for a life after SATA. And it's been a long time coming. Like, like I said, eight years on this current interface. So recently we introduced what we call a value SaaS product line. The value SaaS product line brings a lot of the benefits of SaaS. So the faster performance, uh, the better reliability, and the better manageability into the existing infrastructure, but at SATA like economics. And that I think is going to be critical as customers look at the long-term life after SATA, which is the transition to NVMe and a flash only world uh, without having to be fully dependent on changing everything that they've ever done to move from SATA to NVMe. So, you know, the life after SATA uh, preparation on customers is how do I make the most out of kind of my existing knowledge, my existing infrastructure capabilities, you know, what's readily available uh, from a support perspective as I prepare for that eventual transition to NVMe. Yeah, I want to pick up on that notion of, of higher performance at improving cost of SaaS. Uh, and just make sure that we're clear here that uh, SATA is an electrical interface that has certain performance characteristics, but these new systems are putting an enormous amount of stress on that interface. That's and right. that means you can't put more work on top of that, not only from an application standpoint, but as you said, crucially, also from a management standpoint. True. When you put more reporting, or when you put more automation, or you put more AI on some of these devices, that creates new load on those drives. Going to SaaS releases that headroom, Absolutely. so now we can bring more management workloads, that's important, I, this is what I want to test, that's important because as we do these more complex applications, we're pushing more work down closer to the data and we're using a lot more data, it's going to require more automation. Is SAS going to provide the headroom that we need to actually bring new levels of reliability to more complex work? I believe it will, absolutely. Uh, SAS is the world's most trusted interface. So when it comes to reliability, you know, our SaaS drives in the field are the most reliable product that uh, our customers purchase today. And we take that same uh, core technology and package it in a way to make it truly an economical replacement for SATA. So we have at Wikibon uh, have observed NVMe, so I want to turn a little bit of attention sure. to that. We've observed that NVMe is in fact going to have a significant impact. Yes. Uh, but when you, when Toshiba Memory is looking at what pr what kinds of things customers are looking for, you're saying not so much SATA, let's focus on SaaS, and let's bring NVMe online as the system designs are there. Is that kind of? Yeah, you know, I think it it's out? it's a complicated situation. Um, not everyone's ready for everything at the same time. Even today, 
there's some major uh, cloud providers that have just about fully transitioned to NVMe SSDs. Uh, and that transition has been challenging. Um, so what we see is customers over the course of the next four or five years, uh, their readiness for that transition from today to five years from now, uh, that's happening based on the complexity of what they need to manage from a physical infrastructure and software ecosystem perspective. Um, so some customers have already migrated and other customers are years away. And that is really what we're trying to help customers with. We have a very broad NVMe offering. Actually, we have more NVMe SSDs than any other product line. But uh, for a lot of those customers who want to continue with the digital transformation into data analytics, into realizing the value of all the data that they have available and transforming that into you know, improved business processes, improved business results. Uh, those customers don't want to have to wait for their infrastructure to catch up for NVMe. Value SaaS gives them a, a means to make that transition while continuing on to take advantage of all the capabilities of Flash. You know, one of the things that we always talk about, one of my responsibilities is product planning, product definition. And one of the things that we always talk about is, you know, our ideal SSD, the bottlenecks of the flash. In other words, if you look at a drive, there's so many things that could bottleneck performance. It could be the interface, it could be the power that you can consume and dissipate, it could be the megahertz in your controller. You sound like the, an electrical engineer. Yeah, I'm an electrical engineer, but I'm a marketing guy, right? So uh, there's all kinds of bottlenecks, and when we design an SSD, we want the flash to be the bottleneck, because at the end of the day, that's fundamentally what people need and want. Uh, and so you look at SATA, and it's like, not only is it a bottleneck, but it's, uh, it's clamping the performance at 50% or less than 50% of what's achievable in the same power footprint, in the same cost footprint. So it's just not practical. I mean, the thing's eight years old, so. Yeah, yeah. In, so in technology, eight years is, 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 is a, a Especially lifetime, these right? days. And so, yeah. so to kind of simplify that perhaps or say it a little bit differently, Bottom line is SaaS is a smaller step for existing customers who don't have the expertise necessary to re-engineer an entire system and infrastructure. That's right, it yeah. gives them that All stepping right. stone. So, so, the, so you also mentioned that there's a difference between the flash and the SSD. And that difference is an enormous amount of value added engineering that leads to sure. automation, reliability, types of things you can do down at the drive. Uh, talk to us a little bit about Toshiba, Toshiba memory, as a supplier of that differentiating engineering uh, that's going to lead to even superior performance at better cost and greater manageability and time to value uh, on some of these new flash-based workloads. So I'm amazed at the quality of our engineering team and the challenges that they faced to constantly bring, bringing out new technologies that keep up with the flash memory curve. And I actually joke sometimes, I say it's like being on a hamster wheel. <laughs> you know, it never stops. The second that you release a product, you're developing the next product. I mean, it's one of the fastest product life cycles in the entire industry. And you know, you're talking about extremely complicated, complex systems uh, with tight firmware development. So. What we do at Toshiba Memory, we actually engineer our own SOCs and controllers, uh, develop the RTL, manage that from basically architecture to production. We write all our own firmware, we assemble our own drives, we put it all together. The, prog the process for actually defining a product to when we release it is about five years. So we, we have meetings now, we're talking about what are we going to release in 2023? And that is one of the big challenges because you know, you, these design cycles are very long. So anticipating where innovation's going, and today's innovation is at the speed of software, right? Not mm -hmm. the speed of hardware. So how do you build that kind of 
flexibility and capability into your product so that you can keep up with new innovations no one might have seen five years ago. Uh, that's where you know Toshiba Memories engineering team really shows its mettle. So let's get you back in the cube in the not too distant future to talk about what 2023 is going to look like. Yeah. But this is uh, but for right now, uh, Jeremy Werner, uh, Vice President of SSD Marketing at Toshiba Memory. Thank you very much for being on the cube. Thank you, Peter. And once again, thanks for watching this cube conversation. <laughs>